In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, after 11 years of priesthood, I've developed a two-fold methodology to helping people deal with lust, which is a huge problem in our current day. But first, I wanted to find what lust addiction is and why lust addiction uh, happens, okay? So, what is lust addiction? Lust addiction, for most people that they experience, is a phenomenon of desire or craving or almost compulsion to look at things on the internet, to engage in mental fantasy regarding sexuality and sexual images, and then to follow through with what we would call in the church self-abuse or colloquially called masturbation, okay? How does this work or come about for most people? Well, most people are exposed to pornography or lust or masturbation at a relatively young age. But what happens is it works on a person not so much for just sexual desire. What it becomes for most men is a means of coping or dealing with the stresses, anxieties, and uncertainties of life. And so lust really isn't about sexuality. Lust is about, in my experience, emotional regulation. So people are relying on the dopamine hit and the feelings that, are, that, are, that happen because of the activity in order to take away negative feelings or thoughts that they're having in their mind. It's a means of escapism and it's a fantasy and that's really what it is, right? In real life, a person may be a complete loser and have no chance with women or not know how to talk to them, etc., etc. But, and these thoughts begin to bother him and weigh on him, but he turns on his computer and all of a sudden the most gorgeous woman wants to get naked for him, wants to dance, wants to do whatever sexual for him, and suddenly he's not a loser. But what ends up happening is that after he's followed through with masturbation, suddenly crashing down on his head, are intense feelings of actually being a loser because it's loser behavior. You're trying to escape anxiety or fear or whatever else by creating a fantasy world where these women want to be intimate with you, but your mind realizes afterwards they want nothing to do with you. And in real life, most men would stand zero chance with any of these women. And so it is, it's kind of almost a humiliation ritual whereby a man engages in this behavior, but really ends up humiliating himself. And so it is, I have two-fold approach with three points on each on how I coach men to make progress and to really fight against this. Now, I never want to use the words overcome it because the reality is you're going to be battling it for the rest of your life. That's the reality. Now, the battle becomes much uh I don't want to say easier, but it becomes uh, 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 different. You know, at the beginning, when somebody's really in the throes of getting free of that initial grab and that bond that it has on them, it can be very, very difficult. But as time goes on, a person realizes through practice and discipline and through, and, and through a constant warfare that, hey, this is just a part of life. This is a low-hanging fruit. This is an easy place for the devil to attack me. And so the devil's gonna keep attacking you. You know, until the day you die, women are still gonna be beautiful and you're still gonna be attracted to them. And people are still gonna dress immodestly and it's going to catch your eye. The question is how much time, attention, and thought you give to those things becomes much more controllable when you're not feeding into it. It's like a sugar craving. If you eat sugar all the time, you start craving sugar. But when you start to work sugar out of your diet, you see a cookie, you think, oh, the cookie looks delicious, but you have the self-control. You just say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to eat it. Okay. So number one, as a precondition, you have to have some sense of anger, some sense of anger that pornography and fantasy does not define who you are and that they are pathetic, unmanly activities to be involved in. Sometimes guys will come to confession and it's almost like they're expecting me to hold them accountable, but they don't have an internal sense of who they are as a man. I want every man to have an internal sense that like this behavior is pathetic. It is pathetic. It's not worthy of me as a man. That strong sense and an anger at falling into it so easily has to come internally. It's not about being quote unquote religious or being in the church. You have to be able to rightly define who you are as a man. And 
Because of that, you have to be angry at the things that keep you childish and immature and running from responsibilities and looking to assuage your negative feelings by running to pornography because there's a patheticness to it. And you have to feel that for yourself. Number two, you have to have a sense of perfection. This does not mean that you're going to be perfect in regards to the temptations of lust, but it has to be a desire for a 24 hour perfection to keep yourself pure from masturbation. So you go into the supermarket, you see a woman who's dressed immodestly, yes, you're going to be drawn to that, okay? And yes, you may fall and have a second look or whatever else. Yes, a thought may pop into your head, but you wanna be quick to, to cut it off. The thing is, is that lust is always going to be coming at you, but you want to do nothing with it. You don't want to feed it by engaging in the fantasy and then into the masturbation. And so it is that it's paramount that you have a sense that look, 24 hours without masturbation is completely doable and you can continue to do it by staying vigilant. That is key. Intensity. And I've got, of course, the icon of St. Joseph the Hezekast who battled against this temptation of lust. In his own life, he had done nothing sexual, never been exposed to anything like pornography, and yet the demon of lust tempted him severely when he went to the monastery, they say for eight years. St. Joseph was the absolute model and pinnacle of intensity. He was fully engaged in the fight. He knew that every single the devil, every single day the devil was going to hit him with temptations, and every day he was ready to suit up and engage in the battle. You have to have this sense. I see men who are passive or try to go with the flow or whatever, those guys get taken out super easy because their heart is not in it. You have to be coming with as much ferocity and intensity as the devil is coming at you. The devil wants to destroy you and you have to have the intensity that it's kill or be killed. You will not settle for being destroyed. That is extremely important and you have to cultivate that mental mindset. Even if you fall in battle, you have to have the sense of getting up and saying, I am going to press forward. Today is a, tomorrow is a new day. I, and I, even if that to start over, I'm going 100% tomorrow. Every day has to be approached in this manner, okay? Now, as far as solutions, things that you can do that you can implement activity-wise, this is the mindset, these are the actions. Number one, accountability. I remember a young man telling me that he overcame this uh, addiction to pornography simply by the fact that his priest told him, every time that you are going to fall, give me a call. And he says, but if you do fall, call me and you haven't called me call me afterwards this young man said i was filled with such shame that i was randomly calling my priest every time that i fell he said i could not bear it he said i had to take it seriously and i had to get over it and so it is this accountability needs to be day by day week by week it can't be and i talk to guys and they say oh i went to confession once every three months you can't deal with an addiction seeing your spiritual father once every three months that's not reality i have guys who text message me every single day tell me what day they're on how many days they have sober from masturbation where they're at how their day is going where their mindset is at are they stressed out are they coping are they able to overcome these things do they need to talk on the phone and at the very least i tell guys especially young guys come to confession once a week Come to confession, just being there and knowing that you're going to have to stand in front of your spiritual father in three or four days does a huge amount to encourage you on, you know, the temptation hits you on Wednesday night. And then in your mind, you go, hey, Saturday, I've got to go spirit. I got to go see my spiritual father at church and I'm going to have to tell him if I fell and it's three days away and I don't want to do that. That is number one, accountability. Number two, prayer. And anytime we talk about prayer, we really mean prayer and fasting, okay? Prayer and fasting are the spiritual disciplines that bring the grace of the Holy Spirit. Every day for a person struggling with these temptations needs to be started with prayer. And every day needs to be ended with prayer. Prayer is paramount to asking the Holy Spirit to help you. I often use the analogy, it's like you're bench pressing. 
And when the bar gets too heavy and you're going to fail, you are calling out for the Holy Spirit to grab the bar and lift it up with you. Give you the help that you need in order to succeed in a battle that is beyond your strength, okay? Staying sober, meaning not engaging in pornography, masturbation, these things, is a miracle. One day is a miracle, but it's a miracle, but it happens through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit sees us fasting, using self-control, engaged in prayer, beseeching Him daily for help, crying out to Him in moments of temptation, He comes to our aid and He strengthens us. But we need to be absolutely regimented about it. We can't be praying for an hour, skipping two days, pray for 15 minutes, skip a day. It doesn't work like that. Every single day is the battle of our life for the preservation of the purity of our soul. And lastly, we need penance. Everyone works like this, but especially us men. We need to know that there is a discipline that's going to be involved with us committing a sin that we shouldn't be doing. And so it is. The church fathers have routinely said, especially when someone defiles the temple of the Holy Spirit, they need to be kept from Holy Communion for a period of time. Sometimes that's two weeks, sometimes it's 40 days, which is the norm. Uh, sometimes it's extra prostration, sometimes it's extra fasting. But everyone needs to know, and this is the word of St. Joseph the Hezekiah, he goes, you drive a nail out with a nail. See, when a nail gets stuck and sunk too far into a board, you can't hook it and bring it out. You've got to put another nail on it, and you've got to hit that nail and drive the first nail out through the board. And so it is the penance is the discipline that we know is waiting for us when we give over to these base desires. This, brothers and sisters, is the mindset and the actions and the activities that I lay out in order to combat lust. I pray to God that they help you and strengthen you. I pray that you're able to put them into practice and you're able to find freedom and relief and healing from this most disastrous uh, addiction and evil of the devil. God bless you.